Targeting snapper with soft plastics is so different to your traditional bait fishing. This idea that you've got to be up hours before sunlight, get to a trusty spot, anchor up, have a spread of rods, burly, have fresh bait, and sit there for hours and hours until that bite comes through. That's a tried and trusted way, but it doesn't have to be that way. Soft plastics is completely different. It's about using light spin gear. It's about getting on the hunt. It's a really fun form of fishing that requires a lot less gear and a lot less preparation. So let's talk about rods and reels. And typically a rod and reel for snapper with soft plastics is gonna be something around seven foot in length. That's gonna be a three to six kilo class. Now, if you really wanna push the limits and have a little bit of fun, you can drop that down to a two to five or a two to four kilo rod, but be prepared to lose that odd big fish. Now, the big difference with this light spin gear is that it is fast action. And what I mean by that is it's really, really quite stiff. And that's because it allows you to feel all of those nibbles, get really good casting control, but most importantly, when you actually feel the snapper biting, that you lift and you can set that hook because snapper have really, really hard mouths. So that's one of the real key differences. So these rods are very, very light and weight, quite stiff, and that's just so you can cast all day and they're built specifically for targeting species like snapper. So let's then move on to reel. So I've got this paired with a 3000 size reel. Now you can, again, you can definitely drop that down to a 2500 size if you want to. I just find having a little bit of extra line there is really good. I also like just having these slightly fuller handles. Just gives you a bit more power when you're reeling in a decent fish. So 3000 or a 2500 size reel. So let's move on to lines and leaders. And it's absolutely essential to use braid when you're doing soft plastics fishing as I have in this reel just here. The main reason is that braid is very, very thin diameter and it doesn't have any stretch. So it's gonna help for a whole range of reasons from feeling those nibbles and casting control and even using rods that have quite small guides. I'm generally using anything from 10 pound through to 20 pound. Now on my reel here, I've got 15 pound braid. And what I like to do is I like to go and buy a little bit more of a higher class braid that costs a little bit more. The reason for that is you can really upgrade the strength of it whilst having much, much smaller diameter. So that's the big difference in some of your higher end braids to your lower end braids. And generally to finish off this rod, what we would do is we would attach one rod length of fluorocarbon leader to that braid using either an FG knot, which is great if you've got smaller guides, really nice thin knot, or you can use something like a double uni knot. So that one rod length of leader gives you abrasion resistance, it gives you stretch, and it's also harder for the fish to see. So there's multiple reasons why that's really good and you'll find that will help increase your catch rates. And generally the pound rating is gonna be very, very similar to the braid that you're using. So I've got 15 pound braid, However, at the moment, I'm using 12 pound of one rod length of fluorocarbon leader, but in most cases, it's gonna be a very similar rating from your braid to your fluorocarbon leader. So that's really a lot of the gear set up now. Yep. Here we go, guys. This is the fish that we've been waiting for. And this is a nice fish. This is a nice fish. Let him run if I need to, because we definitely want to land this fish. <laughs> Oh yeah, nice snapper. Nice snapper. Oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that is what it's all about. You got that stormy backdrop behind us. Really watching that sounder closely. I've got about 20 minutes of daylight left and then all of a sudden that reel, that little twin power 3000 started screaming. This is what it's all about, kayak fishing, soft plastics, and snapper. My three favorite things, and I'm absolutely thrilled with that. And you know what? 
I've got a tiny bit of daylight and I'm sitting on top of a patch, so I'm gonna try and get another one. So now we're gonna get into jig heads and soft plastics. Now jig heads come in a whole range of sizes and weights. So generally when I'm going out, I'm taking out a small tackle box just with a variety of sizes because there's not one that fits all. And the reason for that is obviously you're fishing different areas. You're gonna need a different jig head depending on the depth that you're fishing, the strength of the current, and obviously you need to pick a jig head that's gonna match the profile of that soft plastic. So where I'm fishing today out of my kayak shortly, fishing in quite shallow waters. So that is probably between three and five meters deep. So for the most part, I'll be using a 1 8 weighted jig head in a 3.0 hook gauge size. Now, if we were fishing in deeper waters with stronger currents, then we may need to move that up to 1 6 or 1 quarter or even half an ounce. And that's because a lot of the snapper are gonna be holding the bottom and it's really important to get your soft plastic to get down to the bottom. Now, you don't want your soft plastic just to plummet to the bottom because you want that natural action of the tail on the soft plastic just to slowly flutter down to the bottom. So there's a bit of an art to this. What you'll find is after a while it becomes second nature. Again there, that is what I'm using today, guys. So that there is a very, very good option for a lot of the inshore fishing waters here, where I know it's quite shallow water. There's not a lot of current and tide, and I've got a 1.8 in a 3.0 there. So that is absolutely perfect for what we're fishing today. Oh, here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, this is pulling drag. Look at that. Oh, this might be a good fish. Yeah, I've got some stuff coming up now. Wow. <laughs> this is um, brand new rod. I've had this rod about four casts in. It's going right for your yak, so it's gonna to have to be careful. Right on top of where those marks were. Come on. Does it feel weighty? Yeah, it's a nice snapper. Oh, it's a nice size. Fish, actually, yeah. Well, it's a snapper. That's a snapper. Ripper. All right. Oh, so they're on the ever reliable seven inch turtleback worm on the nuclear chicken color. And that is a snapper. So it's definitely not a big one. Uh, it's probably borderline pinky snapper, but that is still a really, really nice fish. Okay, so this is the fun part now, getting to soft plastics. And when you go into your tackle store to pick some soft plastics, it can almost be overwhelming the vast range of options because soft plastics will come in different sizes, different colors, and different profile shapes. And obviously there's certain soft plastics that work for particular fish species. Now, when it comes to snapper fishing, I'm typically using soft plastics that are either four inch size or five inch size. If you're fishing offshore in bigger, deeper waters, then you may even up that to even sort of seven inch. Now, in terms of colors, what I like to do is I like to take a range of natural colors, so things like your whites, and I also like to take really kind of bright out there colors like your greens and your reds. So let me just walk you through some of the stuff that I've got here with me. So starting off, I've got 3.75 inch paddle tails from Munro's. So these are an excellent option. I use these in inshore waters all the time. So that is a terrific one. I've also got some slightly big profile paddle tails there. So they're the Daiwa Bait Junkie four inch paddle tails. And again, got natural colors there. So great range of... I've also got five inch jerk shad. So they are an absolute standout. Tried and trusted, been around for a long time. So that's a really good option. Um, I've got four inch curl tails. So they're the bite science one. So really again, four inch, a nice profile size. Um, got some more four inch curl tails there. So they're the Savage Gear ones. They work really well. One of my absolute favorites is the seven inch turtle back. you've got the camo color, which I use, and I've also got the nuclear chicken color. So I've used these for years and they catch a lot of snapper, catch a lot of those sort of two to four kilo size snapper with these plastics. So they work absolutely great. Again, you've got more jerk shads there. Nice bright colors there, an absolute standout. Um, and as I said, if you are gonna go offshore, you can even take those jerk shads to bigger sizes. So there's some seven inch ones there. 
I've got four inch minnows. That's a really, really good natural presentation of, I guess, a lot of the food source that's swimming around in here that Snap will be feeding on. So you've got ones like that that are really good. I also don't mind some of the smaller paddle tails. So they're a three inch one, so they're a Z-Man minnows. So they work great, especially in those shallower waters. You find you pick up lots of pinkies and smaller size snapper. So that's an awesome option. It's all about getting creative, experimenting, trying different sizes, trying different profiles, trying different colors, and having a little bit of fun with it. Don't just go out with one or two things. Now, it's really important to take your time and to rig the soft plastics correctly. As I said, it's really important to match the right jig head with the right soft plastic profile, but rigging them on straight is gonna ensure that they have that perfect swimming action because a lot of your soft plastic manufacturers spend a lot of time to get natural swimming action into these soft plastics. So whether it's a paddle tail or a curl tail or a worm imitation, if you rig it on correctly, you're gonna get better swimming action. Better swimming action means more catches. Now, whether you're fishing off a boat or off a kayak or even a jet ski, your sounder is an absolute key tool to snapper fishing. Marine electronics can play a really big part. It may be marking waypoints when you spot a patch of fish. It may be zooming in to see that bottom third of the water column. That way you can see some of those arches. It may be using technology like relief shading to ensure that you're fishing in reefy areas because that's where the snapper like to hold. It may be setting drift lines so that way you can see the ground that you've gone over and where you've had hits. All those things put together make a massive difference in finding snapper, staying on topping them and catching them. So it's really, really important to hone in on those skills and use them to your advantage. And it doesn't matter whether you're using an entry level sounder that's worth $500 or whether you're using a high end sounder that's worth 5,000 plus, you can still use all the basic tools that really help you to navigate and locate fish. And even those basic ones have a lot of features that will help you. So do get familiar on how to use your sounder. There are also apps that you can have on your mobile devices that really help you to find great grounds to target snapper and typically what I'm finding especially in these inshore waters is look for reefy areas snapper absolutely love reef it's a really good place for them to reside and it's a good food source for them and if you can fish along the edges of those reefs you're gonna find that you're gonna do really really well so I'll use things like relief shading navionics and sea maps as a really smart way to plan your day and fish those areas that you can be confident that snapper are going to be holding and obviously one thing that you've got to do is invest some time so if you've got your marine electronics to get on the hunt and look for them zoom your sounder in and see if you can find some of those arches and when you do it's usually happy days now the technique for this style of soft plastics fishing is really really easy all you're doing is basically lifting the bail arm casting out that soft plastic as far as you can Obviously, if you're using your marine electronics, you want to be casting to where that school of fish is, and that's a really important part of what we're doing. Let that soft plastic sink, clip over that bail arm. You want to wait until that soft plastic hits the bottom, and you'll know because your line will start to go slack. All you're going to do is wind up some of that slack line, and you're just going to work it back slowly by doing a series of just lifts and hops. And what that's going to do is just going to, going to make that soft plastic jump off the bottom as if it's a wounded bait fish or worm or something of that sort. And that's what really stirs up the fish. Nice and slow, another lift, wind up that slack, let it sit back down to the bottom, let it sit there for another five or 10 seconds. And you're basically repeating that process all the way back through to your boat or your kayak. That's what really, really works. There's nothing overly fancy or complicated about this technique. And yes, it's very, very similar to a lots of other styles of fishing. It's almost similar to as if you're working a squid jig or you know, if you're working a vibe or a plate, it's just that constant lifting action, especially if you know you're near a patch of fish. It's a simple technique, but it's really, really effective and has worked for many, many years. And that's all you need to do if you're starting this. Now, a lot of your soft plastics, like the Berkeley stuff and some of the Doa Bait Junkie stuff, does come pre-centered. And that's really, really good, and it can really help to bring those fish in. What you're gonna find with a lot of those soft plastics is probably after about 10 or so casts, that scent tends to wear off. And obviously, you can buy a lot of soft plastics that don't have any scent. So it's a good idea to have some yourself. So there's two or three different ones that I use. I've been using that a lot. So that is the Aqua X Pilchard scent. That works really, really well. And obviously, Pilchard is a dynamite bait. So that's definitely one that you should have a look at that helps with catch rates. S Factor is one that's been tried and trusted for many years. You just rub a little bit of that into the tail. That also works really well. You got other brands out there like Procure, which also works really, really well. On those quiet days, having some scent can make a big difference, can help trigger a bit of a reaction strike and uh, some really good options to have a look at. Yep, 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 yep. 
All right, big fish time. Yeah, I think so, man. Wow, 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 wow. Oh my goodness. This is a good fish. Oh, I can see color. So locally in our areas here, so fishing season is generally from October through to about April. And what you find there's a little bit of a lapse in between and that's because the water temperature does spike. Snapper fishing goes really, really well when you get water temperatures sort of between 14 and 18 degrees. That's kind of the peak time where they come in and you can catch them actively. And times that you should target them really should be specifically on tide changes. So 90 minutes on each side of the tide is always one of the most productive and always your first light last light bites and the best is if you can align those bows definitely watch the barometer if there's a spike up or down that can definitely set them off into a bit of a feeding frenzy a higher barometer around 10 20 seems to be about that ideal range but again a spike up or down does seem to set them off guys that's a lot that we've covered we've covered all your gear from rods reels lines leaders jig heads soft plastics scents run through some techniques with your sounder and fishing techniques